the way that you would describe an announcement from the European Central Bank or our Central Bank, which is to say propaganda. Um, gold backed. Uh, using what for gold, first of all? If you look at the amount of gold that China and Russia have to back a gold backed currency, assuming that China and Russia would like to use their gold to back the currencies of South Africa and that serial defaulter Argentina. Uh, if you look at the amount of gold that they have to back a currency where that currency would be liquid enough to serve the needs of the citizenry of those countries, never mind the world, they don't have anywhere near enough gold. So how do you back a gold-backed currency with no gold? The BRICS nations have announced plans to create a new currency that will be backed by gold. This is a significant move as it could offer an alternative to the U.S. dollar, which is currently the dominant currency used for international transactions. Rick Rule, CEO of Rule Investment Media, has highlighted that to back a currency with gold, you would typically need to have a sufficient amount of gold reserves. He added that if a country wants to introduce a gold-backed currency but lacks enough gold reserves, it would face difficulties in making the currency widely accepted and liquid. The BRICS nations are considering reduced reliance on the US dollar and euro. Some countries are considering joining the BRICS group, but experts have doubts about the idea because the economies of the BRICS countries are very different. Rule argued that the BRICS nation's new currency initiative is a response to the weakness of the US dollar but is unlikely to be widely accepted and used by individuals for everyday transactions. The US dollar has been the dominant global currency for a long time, used in most international trade and held by central banks. The impact of a new BRICS currency on the dollar is uncertain, but if it stabilizes and weakens the dollar, it could affect U.S. sanctions, decrease the dollar's value, and potentially cause economic consequences for the U.S. Rule believes that the BRICS nations are creating a new currency to trade with each other outside of the U.S. dollar. Rule also believes that the currency is not backed by gold and is unlikely to increase demand for gold. Let's watch snippets from Rick Rule's interview, but before getting into the video, make sure to subscribe our channel and give this video a thumbs up. If you view the currency as gold-backed in the way that the U.S. dollar used to be gold-backed, perversely if you weren't American, because the U.S. dollar wasn't convertible by Americans, only for foreigners, Doug Casey famously said the U.S. dollar was an IOU, nothing. The euro with 17 backers was a who owes you, nothing. If that's true, the brick is a nobody owes you anything. Let's look at the constituents of that. Brazil, non-convertible currency, uh, opaque financial markets, almost no domestic government debt market, certainly no international government debt market. And that international government debt market that there is is denominated perversely in US dollars, <laughs> a deep and liquid currency. Uh, in truth, Every country in the world that borrows in U.S. dollars does so for an interest rate that's substantially below the interest rate in their own domestic currency. So you have a new quasi-currency that's put together, uh, a, a currency where the constituent com companies, countries, pardon me, all have their own political and politically expedient domestic governments, governance. The chance that this currency would ever be liquid in a retail sense is nil. People hear me say this and they say, oh, well, the demand for gold that I hoped would arise won't arise. That's exactly the wrong conclusion. The reason that their bricks are attempting to create a medium of exchange outside the U.S. dollar is precisely because Washington has weaponized the dollar is precisely because the purchasing power that countries like China that own US dollars are experiencing, the deterioration in the purchasing power is greater than the yield that they're receiving on their US treasury securities. The circumstance that causes countries uh, to try and put together a mechanism as clumsy and as ill-suited uh, as the BRICS is precisely the weakness in the world's reserve currency, the US dollar, and is precisely the reason why someone should go in gold. Will some BRICS mechanism evolve that will allow Russia 
to trade with China, China to trade with Iran, Iran to trade with Brazil, outside of the SWIFT banking system, and at least partially outside of the US dollar, yes. But ironically, that trading mechanism, although it will be denominated perhaps in some currency other than the US dollar, will end up being tethered to the US dollar. And repeat, it will not be backed by gold. Or if it's backed by gold, it'll be backed in the same way <laughs> that bank deposits are backed. That is to say, with a fractional reserve system, with 10% of the float or some number like that actually backed by gold. And by the way, not redeemable unless you have more guns than the Russians or the Chinese do. So people need to understand it for what it is. It's an artificial mechanism to uh, the US dollar, uh, which has become a hostile uh, financial system for many countries that are opposed to the extraterritorial imposition of US will and values on those countries. The price of gold usually decreases when the US dollar strengthens and tends to increase when the US dollar weakens. This is because gold is priced in US dollars, so a stronger dollar makes it more expensive to buy gold, resulting in lower demand. Conversely, a weaker US dollar makes gold relatively cheaper and more attractive to buyers, leading to higher demand and potentially driving up the price of gold. On Monday, gold prices slightly declined as the value of the US dollar increased. However, Investors are generally anticipating that the U.S. Federal Reserve will soon slow down its interest rate hikes. Rule believes that the U.S. dollar is causing the decline in gold prices. He does not believe in a conspiracy to suppress gold prices. However, he acknowledges that short-term manipulation of the gold and silver markets is possible. Let's watch Rick Rule's interview with Liberty and Finance. All markets are manipulated. I don't believe that there is any thorough ongoing conspiracy on the part of any competent conspirator to depress the price of gold and silver. Uh, the price of the US dollar is increasing in every currency in the world, uh, <laughs> except perhaps gold, uh, of its own volition. Uh, so of course, the gold price declines in US dollar terms over time, as long as the US dollar is strong. I believe that the best days of the US dollar are behind it despite its price appreciation. I believe that the salad days, if you will, for the US dollar was the period 1982 to 2022. Uh, I think a lot of things changed in 2022. I think that the relative strength of the US dollar relative to other currencies uh, in the pace of US interest rate rises, which have been stronger than interest rate rises in other currencies, uh, I think that the US dollar has underperformed uh, on a relative yield basis to the other currencies, which tells me that we're seeing the beginning of the end of US hegemony, not US supremacy. I think US supremacy continues for my lifetime, but I think US hegemony is over. Uh, so I, I don't think that anybody who is competent to maintain, the, uh, maintain depressed levels of gold and silver prices over time is doing it. I do believe that the structure of the gold and silver market uh, lends itself to near-term manipulation. The extraordinarily leveraged uh, nature of the futures market and the fact that the, the futures market often trades on a daily basis a hundred times the amount of uh, metal available for settlement means that the ability for well-heeled speculators to get, as an example, short on a laddered basis in the futures market, gold or silver, uh, and then overnight during the period when the physical market is at its most illiquid, dumping fairly large amounts of gold and silver, which triggers disproportionate decreases in the futures market, it, it, it would be perfectly po possible to uh, construct a $10 billion futures ladder with a billion dollars in deposits uh, and then uh, sell uh, probably borrowed gold, a billion dollars worth of gold overnight during a period of time when the gold market was weak, uh, depressing the gold price 
by, let's say, five or six percent. We've seen that happen a couple times and have that expressed in the futures letter at seven and a half percent, thereby making a seven hundred and fifty million dollar (laughs) profit against a billion, well, a two billion dollar investment. Not bad, you know, for three or four weeks worth of work. And we have seen uh, both ladders and spoofs in various financial markets as long as I've been involved in financial markets. You will note, uh, or or maybe your listeners won't, because most of your listeners aren't my age, that uh, it's very likely the gold and silver markets were manipulated in the 70s too, except they were manipulated up. You manipulate markets uh, in the direction that is the easiest to manipulate them. I know I'll get a lot of hate from your viewers about that, but that's okay. Uh, There were arguments about manipulation in the whole period uh, 1980 to 2020. Why would you bother manipulating something that was going down of its own volition? Uh, I, I'm on that story like white on rice. Why on earth would somebody with a billion dollars worth of metal sell it at midnight when there's no bids? They're obviously not trying to maximize the value of the bullion they're selling. They're obviously trying to do something else. And the easiest explanation, uh, one that's backed up by 75 years of recorded history in financial markets is that they're doing it to trigger a short ladder or a long ladder. I mean, that one's really easy. Creating a common currency is not a new concept, but it is unlikely to replace the U.S. dollar. Instead, it would exist alongside the dollar-based global monetary system, similar to the euro in Europe. The European Union took nearly 50 years to progress from bilateral settlements to a common currency. Do you think the BRICS nations will be able to successfully create a new currency that is backed by gold? What are the potential implications of such a currency for the U.S. dollar and the global economy? That's all from us. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe our channel and click the bell icon to be notified of future videos.